Hello, folks, and I hope you haven't got your fill of Valorant quite yet, because we're hopping into some collegiate action here. It's going to be the United States Naval Academy versus CSU. Sir Waltman Moxie back at it again. Mox, let's talk about these teams. Yeah, so we actually got to see US Naval Academy last week, and they impressed both of us, right? They had a very dominant performance. I believe their match was actually over in 37 minutes, which, mm -hmm. in terms of Valorant, is a pretty short game. Not too, uh, not too bad looking here. So it's definitely going to have to be on CSU to really try to make their name and, and get some some distance going. Yeah, and it does look like we're going to be going to absolutely no one's surprise bind. Everyone absolutely adores it. And to be honest, you do get to see a lot of variations on how people want to attack and defend this map, right? We've seen the sky today. We've even got to see a little bit of Yoru coming out. Uh, sometimes teams want to go with Sage so that they can just keep a hold of a short and a very tight leash using slow orbs on the wall to always make sure that you can't rush down it and try and push in on that site. That instead you have to try and focus get that double setup of showers and short at the same time and of course we are going to be seeing that in a best of one series so vine's pretty much the only thing no chance for redemption should one team fumble the ball at the five yard line or i guess whatever the equivalent is in non-american sports <laughs> you're just saying all of these american sports like idiot tombs and i'm just like straight over the head <laughs> Is it football? Is it soccer? I have no clue, but one thing we do know I don't about know. is Valorant, and one thing that we also know about True. is that this attacking side is very likely not all going to be coming out on Yaru. A little bit unfortunate there. We've we've been uh, we've been lucky enough to see Yoru the last two weeks, but Step Broski not locked in just yet, just hovering for the time being. But we do know the Cypher and the Omen coming out from the defenders, as as on that Cypher. Very good option here on Bind. Yeah, no surprises there. You have a lot of information coming through. You can make sure that you're not getting flanked uh, by leaving all of your trap wires. And then the Omen, he's just really good all round, right? Able to get in, ultimate can allow you to get a lot of information, or you can set up the sort of agent. crossfire that your opponent isn't necessarily expecting. Sometimes we see the Omen go all of the way to a heaven uh, and set up there as the rest of the team tries to push up through a short and you catch them, sort of box them in between all of your forces. And now we're going to be seeing, yeah, no surprises, no Yaru going to be coming out for the side of US Naval Academy. Rainer is going to be in play for them, and it's definitely going to be interesting to see how this Rainer interacts. Remember, she has been both buffed and nerfed. You don't have to go as aggressive as you used to uh, with her, at least on the solo missions. When Rainer actually hits anyone, uh, the orb comes through. It doesn't matter if someone is actually able to get the kill, so that does allow you to try and double up with your arena rather than sending her out solo. Certainly some opportunities here, but now as we look towards this defending team, we do see the setup coming in here. Sea Dog going to be setting up with that Soba up towards that of the site. Right up in there, ready to throw out some of that sonars, ready to get those recon arrows out. Well, it does seem like US Naval Academy are going to be pushing on towards that B site. CSU, they are running the Cypher on towards the A alongside the Omen and the Rays. That means you are not going to be able to just spam this team down as they come on through, nor can you try and smoke this rush push off and said you've got to be able to get a kill with your Sova and your Jap. As we can see already, a little bit of information going over to the side of the defenders. We still have quite a bit of work to do, and so now we're seeing the attacking team push right towards that B. A lot of smokes going up into Hookah. Checking, looking like they might lean into some sort of a leer. The blinds coming through, but not quite yet. We see Nita holding on under crates, but just can't close the distance with that shorty. Uses the dash, manages to click on to Step Broski right with that shorty. And now we're going to see the lead in here. And all right, it's looking very good for the defenders thus far. Yeah, so operators and shotguns are just two of the things you really do want to just give to the jet because you saw how effective that weapon can be up close and you saw how pitiful it can be from afar. That's a problem jet never has to worry about as long as you've got your dashes charged up and something that Naval Academy are going to have to be extremely wary of, right? Even though we're seeing the Omen playing on towards that A site, you can still set your dark covers and your paranoias to go through and actually land on that opening window drop towards Hooker. It's something that a lot of omens are actually working out, so you've still got that presence, you've still got the numbers advantage on the A site, but you've also got the smoke to buy your team and to get that rotation going through. 
You see Stepbroski throwing out of those darts to try to get some sort of information. The cage going up, and already Wasabi going to be dropping, but it's Grizzy, the Omen player. Not going to be holding out too aggressively, just waiting for that Cypher to pass, and then getting the kill. The Bucky as it comes. And so I'm not trying to land the shots, but a little bit too much distance there for the Classic to deal the damage. Paranoia coming out, gets one, gets the second, and with that, that's four going over to Grizzly. Oh, no surprises. Naval Academy were running a full eco round pistols only coming out from them no armor nothing that we see some variation of like a frenzy or even a ghost just full on default and that means that they will have a pretty good economy coming into this round and this is where it gets really important for this team right you're full buying into the rifles you're full buying into the heavy armor you've got to be able to beat csu otherwise you are going to be so hard up against it in terms of that economy and the defense is just going to be able to hold all of these angles force you to expend so much utility before you can actually get onto these sites and just walk away with so many rounds in a row now as we look as mentioned this attacking team gonna have a little bit more of that arsenal in their pocket we see wasabi trying to hold that area towards the mid teleporters but right now not going to be finding it too much it's the bomb buddy who goes out Trying to find something, but just collapses in a pile of scrap at the end. Doesn't quite seem to find it. It's going to be Chicken leading in there. An initial kill onto Sea Dog is going to be a great opening. Clear coming in, but it's going to be neat to not take an advantage or not really getting capitalized upon with that. Here's the footsteps. Closes onto the Soba. That's the third. Maybe trading up their weapon as well. Still has that shorty in hand, though. It isn't even camping the spike. Trying to wrap around and actually catch the sage, box them into gardens. As Grizzly has got you completely shut down. Even with that slow up coming through, someone should be able to get that rotation into elbow. You're still nowhere near the spike. 45 seconds left, and that's ticking down. Your best bet is the cipher to be able to grab it and just get as fast as they can towards the A site, and that's why their cipher isn't giving it up either. Ooh, but Sumna able to take that turn, get the shot with the vandal, but it's gonna be Grizzly avenged by Nita. Left. Now might be looking for the ace, but it's Zez who gets the final kill as Stabrowski turns the corner. Uh, so Stabrowski was trying to figure out whether Zez was playing on that A side or whether or not that Cypher had leaned towards the B side. That being the closest place to where the spike had dropped. This is the really dangerous position that US Naval Academy are in. They full board into the last round and they can't afford to full buy into this one. They've got to save it out, especially though. And with Nita picking up the operator, it's going to be extremely hard to dislodge this jam. You've got the dash, you can already see the peak is being lined up to go aggressively on to be long. And if Naval Academy can't flash this out with that Reyna, then someone's going to be walking into that op shot. And not as much a threat there with the operator for the jet when you don't have to worry about that similar power being matched. Pajama Sam? Was in the bomb, buddy. Not able to find too much, although a lot of damage being done to the attackers initially. It's going to be Chicken swinging in, getting the kill onto Pajama Sam. And now it looks like the attackers deciding that they want to just back out of Hookah, try to regroup themselves, as a lot of them are still hurting a little bit. Yeah, smart play, honestly, because the jet can very easily just maneuver back all the way to the end of that point and hold the off as you drop down out the window. The camera will be picking them up though, Azaz knows exactly where they are, the Cypher Cage is going to be slowing them down, but Azaz is likewise completely slowed, but they can't cap in time, exactly they lose right. one, the wall having to be put in, the rest should be coming for in a couple of seconds, but you've still got to worry about this jet, will be coming in with an off. The spike does go down, but it's going to be Grizzy who manages to take down two, a good opening here for the defense, I'm gonna, hiding off in that small area. Trying to make something happen, but can't quite. It's gonna be Nita who gets caught, catches rather Chow with those knives. That Broski has to try to contest this defuse. Can't really go for it as the fuse will come through. Yeah, so the wall comes up to try and give a little bit of safety towards that spike and also the resurrection, but it's actually not high enough that you can still get a couple of shots off onto the heads of US Naval Academy from the high ground and see as you were just able to tip it in their favor with that precious utility already burnt out from the side of US Naval Academy. CSU, when they had the mobility, they had the smokes, we saw it from Nita coming in, drops the Clyde burst over the spike, you're free to go for that defuse, and there's absolutely nothing that Naval Academy can do when they've only got one player left. And it's getting dangerous for this team. They're full buying into the rifles again, but now they've got a secondary objective, and that is try to get this off out of Nita's hands. Because that jet could very well just be this attacking team's complete undoing. 
you lose one person too early to the AWP, or if you have to burn all of your utility, making sure that it doesn't have any impact in the fight, that's utility you're not going to have when you actually need to push that side. As we can see, the Owl Drone going out from Chow, not able to find too much, gets stunned out just a little bit there. And now, it looks like these teams are in a little bit of a standstill. No team are really getting too heavy into the kills just yet. A couple shots being traded. Both teams taking a little bit of damage, but not too much. Can't be healed up anyway. And now, we're seeing the side of USNA trying to lean in. They might look like... They look like they might be contesting with that Leer, but no, in fact, it's going to be a push towards the B site. They're going to be dropping a spike along the way. And the Cypher actually got spotted out around B long, so TSU is more than happy to just keep their operator ready. Primes and waiting for someone to walk through Hooker and try and drop through that window. He just is holding. Doesn't need a move. You don't need to relocate. You've still got a presence on A, even if this is a big old bait. You do see Nita there, ready to take the shot, sees the Sage, doesn't quite land it though, has to relocate now, things might start looking a little bit tight for them, it's gonna be the Leer that comes out, but a Hunter's Fury in order to try to capitalize, Chicken doesn't see the up right away, does eventually close on it though, picks it up for their own posterity, and with this, lands the shot onto the Omen, this is finally looking good for the attacking team, as there's only two left for the defenders to really try to come through, Sage Wall gonna be blocking off that elbow. Sage Wall gonna make sure that Sea Dog Gamer has to go through it with the Vandal before, and that's immediately given away your position and where you are. Crossfire is set up perfectly as well. Chicken's down, so no operator in their hands yet. But oh, this is able to get one in Hooker. It's not enough. That crossfire is set up too well. Now it's a one versus one. Sova knows exactly where the Brimstone's playing. Tries oh. to go for the kill. And oof, isn't able to win the duel. Wasabi is able to come out on top, and finally, US Naval Academy. Be able to get the op, be able to get the first round on the board. Couldn't quite get to the op in time, but US Naval Academy still going to be all right with coming out with a point. Wasn't enough to cripple the economy enough for the side of CSU, as they do have now the opportunity to buy another op for Nita. That's always so filthy, right? Mm. You do so much to get the up away from the other team, and then you've lost so many rounds in a row that they can just afford to immediately buy it back, because they really are seeing how much US Naval Academy are struggling against it. And honestly, at this point, you're just better off pushing the A site, trying to figure out where that op is playing. It's always been on the B site. Deploying drone. Push towards that A site so that you only have to take, worry about it in that recontest, and that's when the op becomes a whole lot less frightening, because you're the one who controls the angles of entry. If the off isn't allied into a fight, well, it's not going to do any difference. The smoke coming out from the Omen, trying to keep showers a little bit more crowded, a little bit more claustrophobic than the attacking team might like. And CSU, who managed to get the first kill onto the Naval Academy, taking down that Cypher. Not going to have as many eyes on the field as you would like, but as impactful as if the defense would have a loss. It's going to be the Paranoia landing right on the chicken, who then takes the teleporter just to get away, just to avoid that paint grenade. The Orbital Strike coming online. Sumna setting up a wall, perhaps to get the plant. It will be the Brimstone trying to get there. And Grizzy, too confident on that teleport. A beautiful strike, uh, Orbital Strike as well, coming through lamps, making sure that that space is safe without you having to put yourself into the precarious position of running into a race who likely would just paint shell spam you straight to death. So this is getting a lot of information, especially with that camera, making sure that showers are safe and that you're not going to be pushed. And all the while, CSU are just converging on this site. Rick and Bolt should be able to come through and reveal so much about where the players are hiding, despite the smoke still being up. So I'll be trying to throw out a was uh, trying to throw out a Molly rather make something happen, but some not actually able to get one. That Molly landing right on the spike gonna make it all that much harder to defuse. Really wearing down this timer as well, just picking apart the opposing team. And we saw as well the difference that the op had in that recontest fight. You hardly heard it. There was one shot go off, but US Naval Academy didn't have to worry about it because they'd forced the relocation. They were controlling all of the space and the op is only dangerous when you're the one in control of the space. The second that you actually have to move away and take your eye off that scope, you're lugging around one of the clunkiest and most expensive oh, weapons in the entire game. The US Naval Academy, they're not even going for it themselves. As CSU, for the first time it feels like in this series, are forced to go for the shotguns. Yeah, perhaps a little bit more of a relaxed feel for the Naval Academy. They don't want to, or excuse me, for CSU, they don't necessarily want to lean in too heavily there. They do still have that jet with the auto shotty. Ready to just deal a lot of damage, Chow. 
A little bit of recon, but it's gonna be the jet wrapping around Nita, able to get two from the opposite side. Sumna and Chow both taken down, and Wasabi has to be very careful that they don't get pushed up on, although they will very likely get spotted out by this Howl drone. I was gonna say, I absolutely adore that pick of the weaponry right? that's over picking up the area so that you know very likely CSU, they just lost the AWP. They're going to be on the judges, they're going to be on the shotguns, they're going to be trying to hide uh, around those corners. So you just spray through the wall with the Ares before you actually move through. But we don't see that play come through. And now you've lost the Sova and you've lost all control of Hooker, so you're just forced to go onto an A-set, which admittedly is looking a lot emptier. But you also have got to figure out where Resist is hiding, because if you go towards that A-set and you don't know where the Cypher is, you're going to get boxed in. That Cypher nowhere near a point for the time being, instead just going to be near spawn, but Nita almost getting the five piece, instead it will just be the Brimstone Wasabi remain standing, throwing in the Molly just to secure themselves, and now it's going to be the wraparound coming in from the Cypher Wasabi, in a little bit of a Scooby-Doo chase here. <laughs> well, the mask is going to be pulled off pretty quickly. And there was one reason that I wanted US Naval Academy to just give away Hooker and push onto that A-site, and it's because they just didn't have the flashes. If you'd had a flash, if you had a breach and you yeah. were running that flash point, then you can push on Hooker because that shotgun, that judge isn't just immediately going to find your head. And you lose because of it. You try and take the wrong bit of space on the board. CSU win a round that they should not have been able to come into winning. Anita can once again buy into that operator. Step Broski is forced to go for the little brother pick of the marshal. Which, while yes, can be dangerous, you've drawn. still got to get into that actual angle first, whereas... They can get as aggressive as they want. They've got a full team behind them to make sure that the shots are there, the information to get it is there. Oh, oh Grizzy gets caught with their abilities out. Chow able to, able to parlay that into a two kill. As now we see them rotating away. A now going to be a little bit more clear, but it looks like the defense are responding to that, and the attackers seem to read it decently well. No, it looks like they're going to be pushing through short and snap. He does have the knives, also the operator. Tiduk has got to go first though, you can't send that up in the line of fire and now you definitely can't send it in, especially with that sage wall coming through. You still don't have control of lamps that you want. CSU have got to start trying to push this without losing one player. Need has got the jump, the knives oh, are no. out! Oh, one no. expecting it. Nita able to get three kills off the back end, but teleports themselves to, I guess, the relative safety Sea Dog. Trying to break this wall or just walk around. Take take the long way around. That's okay. Not all of us have up updrafts, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Some of us have to take right. the stairs right. instead of the lift. <laughs> and they've still got the time for the diffuse. Jet is just so scary in that fight, right? With the knives, with the mobility. US Naval Academy, they were so concerned with Sea Dog and trying to keep control of lamps that they completely forgot about the jet that could just jump that wall. And they did such a good job on getting that spike down, on fortifying it up, and then it absolutely slipped through their fingers. And these tiny little mistakes are really what's costing them in the long run when it comes to these rounds and when it comes to economy as well. Yeah, sometimes it's those small mistakes that can change a game of inches here. And now as we look ahead, a bit of a different uh, a scattered by throughout the entirety of this attacking team. Looks like they're not quite sure what they want to go with. A couple vandals, a couple submachine, a vandal, a couple submachine guns, and the shotgun as well. The shorty. As we look ahead here, though, defenders going to be looking to lean in, get some information on this long angle for B. They're able to find out a little bit. It's going to be the cage going out from Sephiroski to perhaps buy a little bit of space. Hunters Fury should be able to buy them a lot of space if you use Naval Academy. The game already relegated into that corner, but they might not be expecting that Sova to still be peeking around that exit of gardens. Spike has not actually started moving towards this B-site though, it could all be a big old ruse. And as you hear, all of US Naval Academy just sort of abandoned this chase on the B-site. CSU are having to think, is it a ruse themselves? Well, Chow getting the kill onto Sea Dog is going to tell them that at least somebody is still there with some firepower, but yes, for the time being, it looks like defense has kind of evenly distributed their manpower across A and B site. And we now see that teleporter going in towards A, but it says it will get the shot onto Chow. Oh, that is not the pick that you want coming through right now. Because Zez can just go straight for the rest of the team who were trying to move from that B site. They've got to go and they've got to go quick. Two players remaining. 
Oh, and you're gonna be walking right into the showstopper. Ooh. Oh, but see, yes, you don't even need it. That is an ultimate wasted. And one of the best things that could just slow an onslaught of US Naval Academy just surging onto one of these sites. On the plus side, you win the fight even though you've invested the ultimate for nothing. So whether that showstopper got the kills or not, whether it was Grizzy or that, you're going to be happy about the win, although you certainly would like to keep that showstopper going into this next round, as it looks like. It's going to be the attackers leaning towards that B side at start. Attackers have full rifles as well. Remember, they were running that very Frankenstein mishmash of a buy last mm. time, so the showstopper being used on that, they're feeling extra happy about it. Because now they do have the firepower to get aggressive against their opponents. They're being extremely careful right now. They don't know where the op is playing. That Porsky could very likely be walking right into that shot and be long in just a couple of seconds if you don't put down a hasty cypher cage just in case. See exactly what they can find. Some in those showers just trying to find something through that smoke but can't quite connect. Right now the defense looking rather stoic. Not really choosing to move and pivot too much. Instead, just keeping their positions, knowing the attacking team needs to make a little bit more of a move, especially on that B site. They're going to know that that op is going to be a little bit overwhelming. We see the orbital strike coming in, and the Rays has to use that death pack to get out. A lot of shots going through a lot of smoke right now, and Pajama Sam actually able to get two with that grenade. Fantastic performance. You will there, but it will come at a cost. Sumna able to, going to be able to revive, though. You have to move in, and you have to move in quickly. Spike is down, but that AWP is going to be coming onto Ahab, and if the smoke clears when it arrives, then you're going to have such a good angle on everything that comes up. Do you really like this wall from Sumner as well? You still get the height, but you don't expose yourself to Ahab, and so the AWP doesn't get the chance to take you out. As it is currently a free versus free diffuse starting to come through, Ooh. and Nita's got all of the space to pull the shots. One enemy remaining. And the defuse is coming through and nothing that that cypher can do. Step Broski has to just sit back and let it happen. Hopefully going to be keeping their vandal going to the next round though. Oof. US Naval Academy. We're seeing this team. There's a couple of cracks in it and a lot of it really is falling around how they play around this op. Because what they do is they get the spike down and then they immediately make sure that they're out of the range of the AWP, right? The Sage Wall is beautiful. It's great. You still have that height advantage. But what the rest of the players do is they actually side lane themselves in that fight. And the second that they give up that space, well, you just just free to move through with those dashes, set an AWP shot up, and then dash back to safety all the while that diffuse is going through. And we're seeing US Naval Academy, they're trying to play around the op by avoiding the space or sending one player, just like we're seeing that Cypher currently sniffing around all down B long to make sure that it stays there before they're actually pushing onto a site. And they've got this part down. It's when that spike goes down that they've got to figure out how to deal with the op now. We'll see if those adjustments come through as we see the rotation into showers coming in from the attackers. Teleport coming in from Grizzy, not gonna be enough as Sumna able to take them down. With a couple of shots, get the self healing there. They hear the rotation come in from the teleporter, but it's going to be a one for one on that summoner. Able to avenge their lost Soba. As now, Azes continuing to hold their own here, and that's going to be Spike going down. The Sage has to try to get it, but it's going to be tough knowing that these positions is pretty well held. Yeah, and you do have your wall. You do have two slow orbs as well, so you've got the means to be able to try to get it, especially Ooh. now that you've been able to get the raise out of the way. But remember, an AWP is there. The shot going to be coming through the crate. Did not wall the AWP off. And that means that you were fighting two people instead of the Last one that you could have relegated have. it to. Zez certainly going to be a little bit happier about that. A little bit more backups. Always going to be nice. But now, as we look at the last round before the swap, it's going to be an invest all type situation. No ultimates on the board really to talk about though here, Mox. Yeah. For a second, I thought that Grizzy was actually going to buy a second operator. <laughs> well, we've seen that play today, right? It's it's last round before the mm -hmm. half. You may as yeah. well. Your currency isn't going to come through. You know the off has been what's forcing US Naval Academy to think twice about just rushing onto one of these sites, but it will just be the one up. So again, we're seeing this very Frankenstein spy coming out from US Naval Academy. They just don't have the economy. This is a force buy. This is as much as they can afford. Getting the omen out of the way early does Keeps mean that they don't have to worry about the smokes. They don't have to worry about the paranoia. And it's also pulled a lot of attention towards that A site. I can see that now, site. What do you do with that attention? Because you know the op is now gravitating towards that space, and look at where it's yeah. set up. 
set up nice and cozy, a nice little diagonal across the site there. As now we can see the attacking team slowly start to push a few members, and more importantly, perhaps the spike over towards that B site. Might be leaning a little bit more to distract only the Sova, but they do still have the Cypher to contest with. That Cypher going to be able to gather a lot of information should the Sova be unable to. I like this player. This is the first proper bait we're seeing from this team, and CSU, they're going to see that they're getting pushed on A. They might not realize that that spike is actually moving towards that B site. The second the Sova sees the presence, the gig is up, but you've done enough. No. The off has been played. And it's gonna be the Odin coming through, Rat Tat tattling along. Sea Dog able to get two uh, with it, and third will be cleaned up by Pajama Sam. Four members only being lost before the round swap or side swap. Oh, it should have been enough. If it had been enough against any other weapon, it would have been enough. Yeah. We see it so often on Ascent. We see it now on Bind. Sides have swapped, and that means that US Naval Academy can feel. It's a little bit comforted in the knowledge that they're not going to have to worry about that op for a couple of rounds. And now that they've got the defensive positioning, they're the ones who can take advantage and pull the same plays that CSU were setting Nita up to immediately go for those kills and force them to be very passive about how they actually approach these fights. And the more passive you are, the more chances that defense has to just pick apart one of your agents. But while from it all comes with getting that economy on your side, you've got to be able to win the pistols with an eight point differential. This is why this round is going to be so crucial here, as now yeah, we can are. see the attacking CSU lining up, going along this. They're sending the Sif Sova, rather, along that a long angle but step broski gonna have their camera spotted out tries to push onto azaz but not quite able to find it things looking very good for this attacking team and this is not the position we just mentioned that you want to be in if you're on the defense especially with wasabi going down oh this pistol range is going to set the tempo for how us naval academy not only can play their defense but also how they can spend their economy csu are three points away from that match point wolf and then that means that every single round that this defense is pulling is going to be a force Ooh, and Sumnet almost getting caught with their abilities out, but able to get the heal back in. SR Chicken able to take down two, but Nita going to be able to turn around and reclaim two of their own. Yeah, and here comes the force. US Naval Academy, they know they can't afford to pull any punches when it comes to saving economy. It's so unlikely that you'll be able to buy something like an AWP, especially if you've lost that first round of pistols, and especially if you're moving towards losing this one, or with CSU going for, no surprises, the Frankenstein's play. You will be giving Nita a, ju a judge, and Nita, we've seen it, can get pretty close with that one, as Naval Academy are gonna be forcing onto the Marshal, it's the best that they can afford right now. They're going to give it into the hands of the Reina, so if she does get a shot, she should be able to challenge to another one, and CSU, sensing it could be online, going to do everything they can to make sure that the signs, sight lines, they're all mitigated. And this attacking team getting very aggressive, pushing right up onto point team, right onto site A, rather. Zez going to be taking the shot, switching over to the Ares, gives it a quick reload, then going to be ready to damage out here. But Chicken able to catch a glimpse of them, takes quite a wailing there, as the recon bolt will be revealing them out for the time being. Some are able to turn things back at least slightly in their favor. Not enough, though, as it's going to be Grizzly who's able to take this final shot, and it's all on to Wasabi to try to win this round. Turns the corner, you can only do so much with that shotgun, though. Yeah, there's only so much you can really do with... Not a lot of economy on your side, and CSU, you saw, they figured they could be up against the Marshal, and so what do they do? They just don't allow the Marshal any time to get any damage on their heads. They just rush onto these points and force Naval Academy to take that mechanical gun duel, knowing that the other side had lost pistols, that their economy just would not be able to stand up to it. And no surprises. Naval Academy once again Take trying to force the Marshal going to be coming from Chicken. Two Marshals going to be coming out of Sumner will be picking one up as well. Trying to keep control of those two lanes leading up to that A site showers and short. And CSU are more than happy to just push onto that B. Step is going to be having that camera immediately revealing that bomb buddy coming out. I mean, the bomb buddy taken it down and. Zabrowski tries to challenge Nita, but no, it's going to be the auto shining. That was a little bit more dominant there. Ares peeking through the bottom of that window from Wasabi. So while it's a little bit questionable if it will be able to get the job done, we see a lot of this attacking team focused up towards that hookah and B site in general. Save Azaz. 
Zez could very well just fake that A-site. And by doing so, you're distracting two marshals. Mm -hmm. Which is Naval Academy's best bet at being able to get an early kill if CSU want to come out of hooker, drop into window, and hit the site that way. And Zez is still making noise, still being a little bit of a bother on that A-short, and it's actually distracted the Sage who was thinking about rotating. Of going towards B back and holding the angle just in case it was a B push, but now you've allowed the team to get onto the B side for free. Ooh, Wasabi able to take the shot onto Pajama Sam, sailing through the air. No big deal on that one, it seems. And now the attacker is able to clean back a few. Nita as well, going to be going for the plant. It's going to be on the Sage and Reyna. A lot of sustain if they're able to get those kills, able to let those cooldowns come online. As now we can see. Sumna trying to take this angle as well as our chicken and both be working with those marshals having those longer lines of sight but might start to work against them if it gets a little too claustrophobic the layer's been used need still got an updraft might not even need it the judge actually misses from the jet chicken's able to pick that one up you going to be coming through and the marshal able to pick it says out through the wall the shoe should be coming out in just a couple of seconds and us naval academy have done enough They'll be able to get another point on the board. CSU were looking pretty comfortable, but Naval Academy having those two players on that A site joining the fight late, it helped them. They were able to move through that list, set yourself to actually be able to safely move through that crossfire that should have been set up to pick you right out. The firing squad waiting for you to reveal yourself on that site. Yeah, and if you're a U.S. Naval Academy right now, you need a perfect game. Can't drop one more round over to CSU. And certainly going to be a task ahead of them, especially with the armory that they have in their pockets right about now. Not looking the most bolstered, although a couple light machine guns there as well. The Vandal still in effect. Now as we see Stepbroski trying to just get a little bit of information towards that long. Not quite gather too much info, though, as it's a little bit blocked by the geometry of the map. Now, you see these teams saddling up. The bomb has been dropped over on the A side, and now the team, or rather the attackers, not committing to either side. Drone will be coming out, announcing the presence in the showers, and there should be the I vying of terror exactly for her, but now we're going to see that Neural Theft immediately coming through afterwards. They know exactly where this defense is playing. I don't know how many members are on that B site, how many members are on that A site, and it's forcing Wasabi to drop the smokes just to try and keep himself alive as the race utility paint shell showstopper, all of it comes through to force him off that site. Oh, and it's actually Wasabi not getting taken down by the showstopper, but needed there to clean up with that judge. Good opportunity arises for this attacking team. They're now up two members. The Empress form still active for the defense, though. Chow taken down, and all of a sudden it's all down to the cipher. It's all about it, folks. Is Stebrowski going to be the last to fall? It's always a really uncomfortable position when you're just so far behind in terms of rounds that even when the side swap comes through, you just feel so pressured to force every single round because you just don't have the points to play around with like that other side, right? We saw US Naval Academy as soon as the side swapped, even though the currency was reset, their back was pushed so far against the wall that every single round they had to just cash out on marshals, on judges, on armor, everything that would meant they would have some chance of actually going into a fight and walking away alive. And that just means that your opponents, they can wait, they can bide their time, they can fall by rounds when they feel comfortable enough to, when they can push aggressively when they feel comfortable enough to. Have to agree as well. It felt like CSU was a little bit better at setting tempos in some fights. I mean, there was one round, I believe, uh, where USNA was defending and it just felt like CSU was trying their hardest to get onto point, you know, no walk, all run, just getting right onto point and making that team as uncomfortable as possible as well. We saw a very impressive retake coming through on the defense from CSU. So I think overall, it's some some things to walk away with if you're USNA that you could definitely look forward to improving and kind of working on as a team. Yeah, absolutely. I think probably at least when it came to their attack, the hardest thing that they struggled with was that operator. Uh, and we do see teams struggle against that operator, right? Fair play. It's one of the strongest weapons in the game. And in my opinion, having that one shot potential is always going to be extremely controversial, especially how the defense can set up those angles. And we see all of the time B-Long and H-Hours always being camped with an operator. But we also know that 
sometimes you just have to bite the bullet, sacrifice a couple of people and just rush the thing. And that was a play that CSU had damn pat when it came to dealing with the marshal, right? They knew that it would be online. They just rushed straight into the fight. Someone might get picked, but at the end of the day, you're going to be on that site. And as soon as you get onto that site, you can stick out of line of sight of the marshal, of the operator, and still have such an impact on the actual fight. Certainly, and that's exactly what we saw here as CSU is going to be taking this 13 to 3. We will be having an interviewee come in here in just a few moments, but that's going to be on the other side of this break. So stick around, folks. Hello and welcome back, everyone. We are here in the interview booth, and we got a treat for you all the way from CSU. It's going to be Nita. So, Nita, hello, welcome, and congratulations on your victory today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I want to start by asking, you know, some of the more, I guess, immediate questions that come to my mind, right? We saw you on that, that jet, and more, I guess, impactfully, perhaps, we saw you on the operator as well. It seemed like that really worked out for you. Now, was that something that once you realized was working quite effectively against your opponents, you just continued to, to roll with, or was that something you were willing to adapt if it didn't work? Uh, the op is usually something our team wants to put me on just because of uh, like my role and how aggressive I am with it. However, if it does not work out, I prefer the judge just because I like playing very close and very aggressive, and a lot of people don't expect me to play so close with it. And because with my dash, I can just leave and get out of there scot-free. Okay. 
Uh, I, I love how like every jet is either just a judge main or an op main. <laughs> 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 you know exactly what you guys can get away with. Uh, we saw a really dominant performance from your defense as well as your attack. And it seemed like there was this big old change, especially when the side swap, that you guys just started getting as aggressive as you possibly could. Was that because you guys had already figured out that you could win the mechanical duels, or was it just you want to get onto the site fast enough? So because of how our setup works, we have Sova and Jet on B, and most teams usually have Cypher on B, but because we have so much information from Sova, and I can play so aggressive with Jet, it allows for a very... Uh, it doesn't allow us to play as defensive on B as we want to, just because if they full push a site, I really only have smokes and Silva really only has shock darts. We don't have the cipher defensive capability. So on B, we really want to try to be aggressive. And because of how they weren't really using their utility to clear out hookah, it allowed me to play very close in hookah with the judge and allowed our Silva player to just kind of get that information down long with the dart. So you guys seem like you have some really quite well rehearsed tactics. Is this like specifically for binds or do you guys have everything set out for all of these different maps that you can just pull out of your pockets? Yes, we, we do have all these tactics for every map. Uh, we do ban some maps here and there, but we do have basic tactics on maps we don't really play. <laughs> well, I won't ask you to name any of the maps that you would like fans, just yeah. <laughs> in case your future opponents are watching and wanting a little bit of a sneak peek on how to take down a pretty look, uh, strong looking team. But then how often do you guys practice? Uh, we practice pretty regularly, probably definitely like at least once a week, probably two times a week. Uh, but we also play a lot by ourselves and we also play in customs together to kind of rehearse uh, not against anyone, but rehearse like what we would do in what situation. Okay, then, do you know what? I immediately have to ask your Sova player, how many hours on average does he spend in custom lobbies lining things like shock darts and recon bolts up? A lot. It's actually funny that you mentioned that because yesterday me and him were together in a custom and we were checking out shock darts and uh, different tactics that we could use together. Ooh. Uh, and then my final question, playing Jet is always very memorable. Uh, is there any moment, highlight on your Valorant career where you were able to just come in and get so many people out with a judge or line up a beautiful operator shot? Mm. I don't want to sound cocky, but it does happen a lot to the point <laughs> where I don't really have a single memorable <laughs> moment. Um, but when I do play Jet, it's a lot of people see Jet and they're saying, like, this jet has to, to pop off, or else, like, there's no point in, in playing jet just because the utility is so selfish. Um, but there are jets that go out, and, and they don't perform. They do, like, maybe 10 and 20. But once you get to the higher levels of play, you can understand that the jet, while he's not fragging out, if he's dashing on site, if he's creating the space, it's okay for him to die because the rest of his team is, is using the space that he's creating. So while there isn't really a play that I can see that... um stands out to me i do kind of pride myself on how i will play selfless if the team needs me to just dash on site and create that space jet confirmed as tank guys you hit it here first <laughs> yeah certainly a uh nice viewpoint to hear coming through for the jet plays a little bit um of a, of a less toxic viewpoint i think but uh nita thanks again for hopping in here before we let you go do you want to give you the opportunity to give any shout outs for anybody you feel might be deserving of them I honestly, my, my entire team, first off, needs, needs most of the, uh, the, the credit because they set me up for success. Most of the plays that, that happens is when I have the op, they usually just set me up to get that opening pick. So while it, it may seem that I'm doing well, it's my entire team that's setting me up for success. Uh, I also want to shout out my, my homies in the JJH clan. They, uh, they, have, they have me in the op role in there as well. And uh, probably my mom and dad for, for letting me play the game and my roommate for letting me borrow his land adapter because I, I haven't got one yet <laughs> a lot of a lot of appreciation going out there but a selfless person nonetheless it seems you know once again thank you for coming in here and having a little bit of fun with us thank you for having me and with that moxie we are about ready to wrap things up here for another wonderful week of collegiate cea action all within valorant but i guess do we have any final closing thoughts here mox 
I mean, I guess just learn to counter your ops. <laughs> it feels like every single round, especially on bind, that it really does come down to one team being able to play around the op and the other team not really being able to play around the op. So go go check out operators. They're, they're pretty strong in this game. All right, our homework for this week, as is told by Mox, but we'll be checking your homework next week. So we hope you tune in to more CEA Collegiate Valorant. But until next time, folks, take care. Stay safe, everybody.